V A ECMO? Yeah, that's a thing. V V ECMO? Yep, that'll work. A V ECMO? No. My name is Ken Hoffman. I'm an intensivist at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. This video is an introduction to ECMO at the Alfred Hospital. It is the first video in a series aimed at staff within the Alfred ICU learning about ECMO and for new staff joining our team. In this video, we will discuss nomenclature and ECMO circuit components. In subsequent videos, we'll discuss indications, complications and specific management for several modes of ECMO. To start with, some definitions. Extracorporeal life support, or ECLS, is a collective term for therapy where blood is removed from the body to support the heart and or the lungs. It can be divided into extracorporeal CO2 removal, or ECOR, which we'll not be discussing today, and extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, or ECMO. The modes of ECMO that are commonly used are venovenous or VV ECMO for lung support and veno arterial or VA ECMO for heart and lung support. After talking about the mode of ECMO, we mention the configuration, which describes the cannulation sites. The usual vessels for cannulation are the femoral, jugular, and sometimes subclavian vessels. We list the access and return sites in order. For example, VA fem fem or VV fem jug. It is worth briefly mentioning another configuration that we term high flow. This is where there are two access cannula, one femoral and one jugular to try and increase the total flow through the ECMO circuit. Notice that in ECMO, we deliberately use the terms access and return cannulas instead of venous and arterial. This is because in VV ECMO, the return cannula is in a vein, whilst in VA ECMO, the return cannula is in an artery. While we are talking about this, we should mention that when documenting the mode of ECMO, we usually put a dash where the oxygenator goes. This is because there are some more complex modes of ECMO, and VVA could stand for two venous cannulas and one arterial return, or one venous access with a venous and arterial return. Using a dash where the oxygenator is clarifies this. The ECMO equipment itself is pretty simple. It consists of tubing, a pump, a gas exchanger, and a console to control the flow rate. If we travel around an ECMO circuit from start to finish, we begin at the access cannula. This is a large cannula which sits in a central vein close to the heart and usually has multiple holes to pull blood into the circuit. For this reason, it is called a multi-stage cannula. Blood is then pulled by negative pressure through the access tubing to the pump. The pump is a centrifugal pump. When the speed is turned up on the console, a spinning magnet spins a disc called an impeller within the pump head. As this disc spins, blood is moved outward by centrifugal force. This results in a high pressure around the outside of the disc and a negative pressure in the middle at the inlet. The high pressure blood around the outside of the pump is collected in the pump outlet. This high pressure blood then flows to the membrane oxygenator. This is where gas exchange occurs. The membrane oxygenator is a chamber filled with tiny tubes or hollow fibres, which are permeable to gases, but not to liquids. As blood flows through the chamber, it passes between sheets of these tiny tubules, allowing gas exchange to occur. 
There are also sheets with tubules with water flowing through, connected to a heater, allowing very efficient heat exchange to occur and precise temperature control of the returning blood. The amount of gas flowing into the oxygenator is called the fresh gas flow. The membrane oxygenator is very efficient at gas exchange. Oxygen rapidly diffuses into the blood, fully saturating it even at low fresh gas flow rates down to 0.5 litres per minute. Remember, the volume of oxygen used by a human is only 200 to 250 mils per minute, and we're putting the oxygen directly into the bloodstream. For this reason, turning up the fresh gas flow rate doesn't help with oxygen delivery. To increase oxygen delivery, we need to increase the overall blood flow rate in the ECMO circuit. However, turning up the fresh gas flow rate does increase the rate of CO2 clearance. Think of this like turning up the patient's minute ventilation or breathing rate on the ventilator. Once the blood passes through the oxygenator, it travels back to the patient under positive pressure through the return tubing to the return cannula. The return cannula is usually smaller than the access cannula and is termed a single stage cannula as there's one large hole at the end, although they do have some small side holes near the tip. In summary, we've talked about ECMO nomenclature with VV and VA modes being the most common, although there are more complex modes. We have also talked about all of the components in an ECMO circuit. For a more comprehensive introduction to ECMO, please join us for our two-day hands-on ECMO course. If you would like to read more about our ECMO protocols, they are available for free in open access format on the world's most appropriately named website, ecmo.icu. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you would like to see more videos like it, please subscribe to our channel.